Hey guys, it's Reflex, and I'm about to show you how to make this in 10 minutes. Okay, now before I get too in depth with this, there is no correct or professional way to do this. There are many different techniques, but I'm going to show you one of them. So before we get into the actual editing, I'm going to give you a little introduction into some of the things I'm doing that might get a little confusing later on. So right here, I'm making a new composition. Make sure it's selected to either 24 frames or 30 frames per second, and then you can set your duration at the bottom. Uh, make sure the height and width are the same as your video so that it doesn't get squished or zoomed up. It'll also save you all the time that it will take you to like realign the video to make it the correct comp size. So I'm gonna name it right here and uh, for example I have two clips up on the left that are Fortnite clips. Now either you could just drag these cinematics in and try to like crop them up in your timeline but that can be a little cluttered and confusing when you have lots of clips so if you double click it it'll open in a new tab and you can just click the trim tools um, select the part that you want by like scrubbing through and then if when you drag it in it gives you the nice cut clip with like no extra so you don't need to trim it and what we're gonna do once we get these two clips cut up and put into the timeline is to snap them together and make it flow like one without any black spaces or overlapping videos so an easy way to do that is hold shift which will make the clip snap this is so much easier than zooming in and trying to get it lined up to the exact frame just a major time saver Another thing that may not be too obvious to some is opening time remapping, which I do a lot by command. So either you can right click time and then click enable time remapping, or you can just press control alt T or command alt T on your keyboard. Once time remapping is enabled on your layer, um, select a keyframe at the beginning and the end of the clip that you want to use, drag it up to speed it up in the timeline. And the goal here is to make the clip look a little bit sped up. So you can go through and make the beginning fast, slow in the middle, and then fast again towards the end of it. And then keep in mind that you want to line up your keyframes for time remapping with your audio so that it flows. Okay, a quick jump to the future, and when you click on your graph editor, make sure your keyframes are selected by the way, it may show you a box, which is not what you want. So right click and then enable value graph will give you a perfect line. And this is the speed of your video. So we're going to be changing this to warp it throughout the tutorial. So you could either click on easy ease or you could just select it and press F9 which is what I'm gonna do and this will give you little knobs you can use to like speed up and slow down so what you want to do is give it this reverse S curve right here that's the look you want so the the flatter part in the middle is gonna be slow and then it's gonna speed up towards the edges so let me make this a little more vivid so I can show you it's a little too much I didn't realize it was four seconds when I um, when I spread it out but it's giving the effect that you want. It'll make it have flow. And another tip for when you're recording cinematics is make sure you pick like one direction to rotate in and stick with that direction. In turn, the whole thing will be smoother. Now you know the basics, so let's start things off. Here we are in the video editor, Adobe After Effects. And as you can see, I've Okay, so that's really the only thing I have right now, and I'm not going to go over that because it's kind of complicated. Um, you have to get a better grasp on After Effects before you start doing that stuff. But basically, if you want to know how I did it, I just recorded two videos and then flipped them upside down, rendered them together, and then flipped it over in effects. So step one to any video making is find your hotkey for a marker, and then listen to your song and put down markers wherever the beat hits. Open up your wave editor, and then make sure they're lined up with the actual... Once you've lined up all your markers, you are ready to start opening your clips and trimming them up and then lining them up and remapping them in your timeline. Okay, so right now I'm looking for the frame where you can't see any camera movement. Uh, so like there's a zoom in and there's a little glitch afterwards, it looks like. Yeah, there's a little glitch. That was just the um, video recording fault, by the way, I'm using Shadowplay by GeForce. It comes on the GTX, I think 960 and up. Okay, so this looks pretty smooth. Yeah, right there. So I'm gonna cut it right. I'm gonna cut it right here. 
that's pretty long but I think it'll be good once we speed it up so you have to just drag it in and then drag it to your first here let me do it drag it to your first marker and then control T or enable remapping I'm gonna set the starter keyframe and then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit go to the very last keyframe go to like the very end of the video and then mark another keyframe now what I can do is delete the very last one so that we don't need to worry about any extra lines being disruptive with our edit flow and so what I'm gonna do is go to the first marker on the audio and drag this keyframe in so now it's super sped up and it looks terrible so once you do the remapping though it will it'll go fast in and then slow in the middle slow motion make it look all smooth and then fast out so I'll cut to it when I'm done okay so here I am just tweaking it a little bit I'm trying to find a good velocity that makes it look slow motion in the middle without it being too glitchy to the point where you can see each individual frame and to the point where it doesn't look like it was sped up so you want to give it a soft feeling all right so here I am just speeding through this video while I do this with a bunch of other clips and you'll see on each one of them I try to line it up with the next keyframe or if that's too fast you can line it up with keyframe after whatever looks good in the video there's no specific rules you need to follow um, anyways I'm just gonna chop up some of these put them together and I will show you how it looks okay so I just finished putting together the video that I want to do for this tutorial so here I'm gonna open my other composition and in here you'll see I have two brown layers the brown layers are pre-composed composition layers by the way one is slit that's just that's separate that's just for audio and i'm going to add an effect called rsmb which is real smart motion blur you can buy this online or you can use the free after effects alternative just click and search and type in motion blur it'll come up so when you drop it onto the layers it should make everything really smooth and then you just need to tweak the settings a little bit so it's not like over blurred and you'll have a really nice effect just like this Okay, so some of you might not know what you're looking at, but the pre-recorded footage of this did not have any blurring in the background. And basically, this motion blur will give it a nice effect and track which is moving and what is not. And it'll make the whole thing flow smoother and transitions will be smoother without needing to use flips or punches through just to get into the next frame. It'll be completely seamless and it just has an overall better effect. Moving on to color correction, there are many ways to do this. I'm not going to go over too many in this video. I'm just going to use Magic Bullet Looks. So here I am inside of the editor. And basically, I'm just going to look for a frame. Um, you can either customize this or you can just pick one of their many templates. So I'm just going to skip forward to when I find what I like. See, there's not just one way you can do this. You just mess around till it looks good. Every clip is unique. Um, I also recommend using Curves Editor or Hue and Brightness and Contrast. You can use all of those in substitution to Magic Bullet Looks. So basically once you go through and color correct all of your clips to what you think will look good for the theme of your video, you're pretty much done and this is how you can render it. Okay, so step one to rendering is make sure you have the entire part selected that you would like to render. Now click File, Export, and then you can either do Export to Media Encoder which takes a little longer but I'm gonna put on extra sound effects and swishes in Adobe Premiere Pro so I like to just export this as an AVI format copy what I'm doing on screen select your output file location and I'm just gonna save it here okay and that's it just click render all right thank you for sticking through this and watching the tutorial I hope this helped um, just know there's lots of new content coming soon to my channel, so make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications.